The following program is brought to you by Caltech. Hi. <laughs> Hello, Caltech alumni and special guests. We are delighted to welcome you back for seminar day and to celebrate the 2014 Distinguished Alumni Awards. Caltech is a community driven by scientific curiosity, integrity, and confidence in taking big risks. Community is a key word. The impact that any university has on the world really happens through its people, its faculty, staff, students, and you, alumni. Caltech takes great pride in techers and the success that you achieve within your chosen fields whether as scientists, inventors, problem solvers, leaders, entrepreneurs, or educators. Together we pursue the big ideas that help to shape and transform our world. I am deeply proud to be a part of this community as I know you are. It is now my honor to introduce and welcome Caltech's interim president and provost, Dr. Edward Stopor. Thank you, Heather, and uh, welcome and good morning to everybody. Uh, welcome back to Caltech and again to uh, Seminar Day. And also, uh, I want to thank uh, uh, the Alumni Association for arranging the entire uh, reunion event uh, and weekend and Seminar Day, and also to Paul Levin and his team for putting together uh, what is a really exciting program. Uh, let me extend a special uh, welcome to the class of 64, their 50th reunion. Uh, Curiously, I happen to know several members of the class of 64, and I ran into them at the various events, and I, I can't believe that, uh, that they are uh, 50 years out. And uh, I have, I'll tell you, this is my 40th uh, year uh, reunion, and it's hard to remember that I'm so old. Uh, <laughs> Actually, the thing that is, I actually remember so well college, so it, uh, that's, it's good. Um, so I had fun interacting with the, the uh, uh, high number uh, um, reunion classes. There actually were several I met from the class of 44, so their uh, uh, 70th reunion, which is quite remarkable, and they look great. And also the uh, younger alumni that uh, were at the uh, party and reception last night. The other person I want to welcome and thank uh, uh, is uh, Tom Rosenbaum, who's uh, about to become the president. Uh, you want to stand up and wave at everybody? Uh, as I know from the events of the last couple of days, there's a lot of pent-up demand to uh, say hello to him, so uh, uh, don't rush him all at once, but uh, he's a very nice guy, and uh, I, I've gotten to know him uh, quite well because um, he was announced at the end of October, but he and I uh, conspired because a long time was going to pass before he starts on J July 1st. Uh, we talk for an hour uh, every week, and I've really gotten to uh, know and admire him, and I think he's, uh, he's going to be a truly outstanding president, and I'm looking forward to it myself, and I think the whole community is. So the point of this, uh, what we're doing here, is to present the Distinguished Alumni Award to six Caltech graduates. Um, we expect great things of all of you. Right? That's, that's the norm. Uh, you know, follow many different paths, uh, but, but uh, you know, you're all educated in a special way. You have special talents. Uh, and you have a mission, uh, I believe, and that is, it's, it's an extension of our mission, and that is to take a small group of people, and it is a small group, and give them a very intense and very rigorous and very focused scientific and technical education, but at the same time prepare you to be citizens of the nation, of whatever nation you're from, of the world, to make a difference with that technical education. So as part of that, there's also, for the undergraduates, a strong leavening of the technical education with humanities and social sciences. And although it's common these days for, for uh, technical schools, for science, people that are educated in science and education, 
and, and, and engineering to be broadly educated to understand the context of what they're doing. This is a hallmark of Caltech. When Caltech was founded, it was important that a quarter of all the classes taken by the scientists and engineers would be in humanities and, and social sciences. So it's extremely important. And so we expect and get great things. The nation gets great things for you. So for me, the Distinguished Alumni Awards are, are something particularly important because it's for people that do unexpected things. So we all expect great things from you and, and to make contributions, but it's for the unexpected things. And you'll see that the people we're recognizing today have done expect, unexpected things. In thinking about, uh, about today, we also, there are people, in any given year, there are people that are alumni who do unusual and extraordinary things. And, and we've got a small list of them here. Uh, and I will read them to you. Two of, our, uh, of your fellow alumni, Laurie Leshen and Phil Hanlon, were named presidents of universities in this year. Laurie will be president of uh, Worcester Polytechnic, and Phil will be president of Dartmouth College. Martin Karplus, who has a PhD in chemistry and also won a Distinguished Alumni Award, received the Nobel Prize in chemistry this year. Franz Cordova received a PhD, uh, was uh, sworn in as the director of the National Science Foundation recently, and she also received the Distinguished Alumni Award. Kevin Boyce, uh, who's a professor at Stanford, a paleobotanist, uh, was named a MacArthur Fellow. And now for the most unusual one of all. See, this, this, this fellow should win a Distinguished Alumni Award because this is, this is not expected. Derek Serka led his team to capture the USA Curling Mixed National Championship. <laughs> you know, we, we ex again, we expect great things of all of you, but not necessarily winning the uh, National Curling Championship. Uh, also during this year, I just want to mention, uh, we mourn the passing of, uh, of uh, many alumni, uh, and, uh, but one in particular I want to mention uh, is uh, Gordon Fullerton, who uh, had a big impact on the nation as a test uh, pilot and astronaut for the Air Force and then for NASA, and he received an undergraduate degree and a master's degree, so we're sad to, uh, uh, for his loss. And his family is here, so I want to recognize him. I want to echo something that, uh, that Heather said and, and, and say it more strongly than, than many of you may agree with, but it's what I believe. Um, the impact of a university actually is mostly through its alumni. You know, it, it, over long periods of time, there's a lot of people that go out and, and are ambassadors and make a difference for the world because of the education they received at the university. And, and that's what we're honoring and recognizing and encouraging through this weekend, through these alumni awards. Uh, it's, it, is, it is you who ultimately define how Caltech is viewed in the world because there are so many of you and, and you're out there uh, making a difference. And so it, to me, it's extremely important to have a close relationship with our alumni and to let them know how much we appreciate uh, what they've done and to see their accomplishments and the role that the Caltech education has had in what they've been able to do. So, oh, yeah, one of the reasons I feel so strongly about this is I have to say my son just defended his thesis this week here at Caltech. And so, you know, I, I, uh, he's going to join your ranks. He's going to join your ranks. I hope he does something extraordinary and someday uh, gets to be a distinguished alumni. Uh, but uh, he will bear the imprint of his Caltech education, which is very special. So the uh, Distinguished Alumni Awards were first presented in 1966, and it says, Maybe it's what I've said. It's, uh, it's the high honor, highest honor bestows upon its graduates, and then in quotes, recognize a particular achievement of noteworthy value, a series of such achievements, or a career of noteworthy accomplishment. Actually, I expect that of all of you. So I want something even more, and, and these people have done something even more. So it's a privilege to present the uh, Distinguished Alumni Awards to six extraordinary individuals. And the way this is going to work, uh, it'll probably take one or two to get our, uh, our motions down. I'll say a few words about uh, why they were selected uh, by the Alumni Association in Caltech uh, for this recognition. Then they'll come up, I'll give them uh, their, their parchment, uh, shake their hands, have a picture taken, and then they will say a few words uh, on a topic of their choice. 
Okay, so first, the first awardee uh, is uh, James Wong, who uh, receives his PhD in 65. By the way, the, the order is going to be by date of award. So James has the earliest, uh, has, has the, uh, earliest uh, uh, degree. And so he received his PhD in uh, 65. Uh, in fact, he defended 50 years ago this month, in uh, May of 1964, but it was a little too late to get into the, into the graduation, so his degree is in 65. He's uh, the chairman of uh, Chinny Holdings uh, Limited, which is a, a, a corporation in Hong Kong. Uh, he's also an honorary professor of mathematics at the University of Hong Kong. Um, James, I've actually gotten to know him uh, quite well in the last uh, years, one of the pleasures of being uh, the interim president, and he's a remarkable fellow. Uh, he first came to the United States uh, from Hong Kong in 1958 to study physics and math at Baylor. He was such an outstanding student that, student that the people at Baylor said, there's only one place for you, and uh, he came to Caltech for graduate studies. Uh, uh, then he was, uh, uh, he, he went from here to going to being a professor of math at University of Alberta. It was apparently too cold. He moved down, <laughs> he, he, he told me it was too cold. And he then moved down to uh, Wisconsin, and then Carnegie Mellon, and Iowa. So he's moving, moving down. And uh, always as a professor of math. So his distinguished uh, career to begin with as a professor of math. But then uh, he, uh, in 74, went back to Hong Kong to take over his uh, father's uh, business. Uh, and uh, what is the business? It's the Chinny Group. And James led the transformation of his father's company. And it uh, manages assets. It was involved in construction and development, but manages assets totaling $2 billion and employing 2,000 people around the world. But in addition to this, all the while, while he's, uh, he's busy uh, being a captain of industry, he also has continued with his mathematical research, writing more than 150 papers, holding adjunct professorships in Hong Kong. And so our, our, the, the citation is uh, to James as a distinguished alumni, alumnus for substantial contributions to mathematics and commercial enterprise, and to couple, take what he learned at Caltech and continue to make contributions to mathematics and also develop uh, a major global industry uh, is an unusual accomplishment. So join me in welcoming our first 2014 Caltech Distinguished Alumnus, James Wong. If, if, if you have the opportunity, he is, uh, he is a great, he's a great raconteur, he tells great stories, he and he's come a long way. He and his family have come from Hong Kong. Come on up, James, and... Uh, Come over here. Let's see how we gotta do this. My fellow alumni. I'm very honored to be here. I have one corrections, I mean, not one amendment to add about uh, my uh, PhD 65. Uh, I did not have a father who was the interim president, so the PhD defense uh, uh, that I was scheduled, uh, it was in May 20 some days, which I just missed the graduation. Because one of the examiners have something special, so they, 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 the, the, the day was really postponed. So now I also got cut out from this half-century club until next year. <laughs> it's a word of uh, protest on behalf of the Arab <laughs> uh, I'm probably one of the first uh, Caltech student from Hong Kong. Uh, there was one earlier than me, that's Dr. Albert Yu, who was the Distinguished Alumni of 2011. But th that was a fake. He was from Taiwan, but he just <laughs> <laughs> He was in Hong Kong only for one, two years. <laughs> 
but uh, he he was he promised to be here tonight. I mean to today, but he he was not feeling well, and I shall go to visit him in Palo Alto uh, towards the end of this week. Uh, I'm very proud to be here. I'm from truly from Hong Kong and active <laughs> with the small Hong Kong Alumni Association, and they they at least do some some. I guess some of the scholarships by sending some of the Hong Kong graduates to this. I hope now that uh, the, uh, Hong Kong has uh, three major universities, other than the Hong Kong University, there's a Chinese university, and there, there's one which is called University of Science and Technology, and that is supposed to run like Caltech. In fact, the incumbent president, Tony Chen, formerly a professor at UCLA, was from Caltech, and he's now the president. So now you, need, you know at least two alumni, myself and him in Hong Kong. So if you come to Hong Kong, you can find us through the alumni office. Thank you very much. Thank you, James. One of my uh, pleasures as uh, interim president is I went to Hong Kong, and there's a very active uh, alumni group there, and they uh, showed us uh, great hospitality. It was great fun, and they're very, very uh, engaged and proud of their connection to Caltech. Any of you, I, I you know, I, a famous uh, geochemist once told me a story doesn't have to be right; it just has to be interesting. So. <laughs> It's likely that many of my comments will have to be corrected. I'm, I'm going to get another one now. <laughs> uh, my wife reminds me that I did not bring this. The one thing well, you're going to pick it up afterwards. They're going to send it to you. <laughs> yeah. I, okay. So, you know, you get to be a distinguished alumnus for more than a minute or two. <laughs> All right. So. So it's okay for any and all of you to correct me when I say something wrong. Uh, I won't mind. But the story will have had a point even if it's not right. Okay, so the next one uh, is uh, a second awardee is Mary Baker, who has a master's and a PhD in 1972, the master's in 67 in applied mechanics. She's the president of ATA Engineering uh, Incorporated. So after earning her PhD at Caltech in Applied Mechanics, she joined the Structural Research Corporation, uh, an early pioneer in computer-aided design and analysis, which she helped adapt to the unique needs of the aerospace industry. She eventually spun off a new company, ATA Engineering, which has continued to provide design, analysis, and testing to the aerospace uh, industry. Um, she is uh, deeply, the corporation is deeply involved in NASA missions, especially at, uh, at JPL. And I first met Mary when she, uh, on behalf of the company, uh, received an award at JPL given by the NASA administrator, the George uh, Lowe Award for Technical and Business Excellence. It's NASA's premier award for quality and performance among its contractors and subcontractors. Uh, ATA uh, has also been named one of the to uh, top small workplaces in the United States by the Wall Street Journal. Uh, so again, this is something special, I think. So uh, her citation is for her pioneering entrepreneurship and leadership in aerospace. I'm pleased to present our second 2014 Distinguished Alumni Award to uh, Mary Baker. me and I'm going to send it away someplace. <laughs> So as you've heard, the Distinguished Alumni Award started in 1966, and that's when I arrived at Caltech. Starting as a graduate student, I have attended Alumni Seminar Day for almost every one of the 48 years since, and have, have watched nearly every award. I never thought I would be up here receiving one, especially since I wondered whether I had been mid admitted by a mistake after I arrived at Caltech and I realized the caliber of the other students. 
From my first arrival, I felt a special environment. It was okay to be an engineer. It was okay to talk about your work at a party and to be excited about the work that you were doing. Some people think that there were no women at Caltech in 1966. In fact, there were seven women graduates when I, graduate students when I arrived, and I immediately had six friends spread across campus in different departments. For example, Sue Kiefer was a geology graduate student who later became a distinguished alumni, alumna well known for her research on Mount St. Helens. We talked frequently. When she wanted to understand the mechanics of rocks, I shared the advice I had gotten on the excellence of Jim Knowles as a teacher, and she took his theory of elasticity class with me. After my second year at Caltech, a house on the edge of campus was converted into a women's graduate dorm. Two of us moved in and welcomed new women gra five new women graduates. Among the newcomers were Uma Chowdhury, who just arrived from India and went on to become the head of research at DuPont, and Lily Jan, who had just arrived from China. Both of them have also become Caltech Distinguished Alumni. The graduate house was not only multidisciplinary, but multicultural. The seven of us each invited our advisors to dinner and made food from our hometowns that covered the corners of the US as well as India and China. It is the small size of Caltech that enables and necessitates interactions and collaborations across disciplines. When, we've heard that several times across the disciplines, and it certainly was true for me. When prospective students ask me what is special about Caltech, I tell them it is one community, including not all the technical disciplines, but also the undergraduates, graduate students, faculty, working, studying, and playing together. In my first year at Caltech, I swam laps in the 50-mile swim program with Professor William Smythe, who was well known for teaching electromagnetism to generations of physicists, including five Nobel Prize winners. I house sat for Professor Horace Gilbert, whose mission was to be sure that Caltech, under, Caltech engineers understood the business elements of the companies that they worked for. After graduating, I visited him every alumni seminar day for as long as he lived. He would be happy to know that I ended up running a business. My advisor, Harold Wayland, was a physicist teaching mathematics to engineers and working in bioengineering. I studied for my oral exam in Firestone Library, where I often encountered Hirsch Cohen, a mathematician on sabbatical from being assistant director of IBM Research Labs, the location of my first job after getting a PhD from Caltech. I also took classes with several undergraduates, including Paul D. Matakis, who later became a Caltech professor. Many of the graduate students I knew at the time moved into leadership positions, such as Charles Alachi, who has led JPL through its very successful Mars exploration missions. Caltech is a place that has its priorities straight. Science comes first, and sports are for fun. Everyone can play. <laughs> When I became one of the first women allowed to live in the regular graduate dorms, I walked up to Mark's house where a group of students playing volleyball out front asked me to join them. My first thought was, you really don't want me to play because I'm not very good. Then I watched him play for a while. <laughs> and and I, they, were no, I, they were no worse than I was. <laughs> so I decided maybe they did want me to play. At Caltech, sports are for everyone to enjoy. It is the science you have to be good at. Caltech taught me to be tough. Classes and exams, both written and oral, were tough. When my advisor realized I did not like to give presentations, his response was to make me give lots of them. <laughs> While I was a PhD student, I gave 17 seminars at his instigation. After Caltech, when I faced the pressure of a critical design review or the stress of starting a new company, I often thought to myself, I survived Caltech, I can do this. <laughs> I came for a master's degree and I stayed for a PhD because I did not want to leave this special place. When I did leave the academic world, it was because I felt as an engineer, I should work on things that get built and fly or otherwise get put into service. ATA, the company I helped start, is my attempt to achieve a balance between the challenges of innovation at a university and the satisfaction of seeing one's ideas be put into service. ATA identifies and develops new engineering methods to address customer challenges for applications such as space missions and theme park rides. 
A special thrill was, was the opportunity to test real hardware for JPL's Mars Science Laboratory and then watch the Curiosity rover make its way to Mars. I very much appreciate Caltech for all it taught me, as well as my staff at ATA, whose good work has impressed Caltech enough to give me this award. Thank you, Mary. I, I thought those remarks were wonderful, let's say. Okay, next is uh, Paul Steinhardt, receives a bachelor's in 74 in physics. He also is in, this is his 40th reunion, I was class 74, someplace else. Um, he's the Albert Einstein Professor in Science and Director of the Princeton Center for Theoretical Science at Princeton University. Uh, Paul, uh, is uh, quite remarkable because he had made contributions in, in several, several different areas that are quite, uh, quite important. His cosmological contributions have shaped our understanding of the early formation of the universe. And in 1982, he, along with a graduate student, proposed the first successful working model of cosmic inflation. Uh, those of you who were already here before we, the rest of us came in, just heard Jamie Bach talk about the uh, important uh, recent BICEP2 experiment uh, and his connection to Caltech. Uh, and which, if confirmed, verifies the importance of inflation, and maybe Paul can say a few words about that. But I know him, uh, partly I know him because his son was an undergraduate and is here in, uh, in geology, so I knew him from that class of uh, 2011. So uh, uh, another, he's a Caltech parent in addition to being uh, an alumnus himself. Um, but I first got to know him for his work on quasi-crystals. Now when I went to school, we, when we learned about uh, crystal structures, we were told that there could be no crystals that had five-fold symmetry elements in them. And then, uh, presumably, uh, roughly 30 or so years ago, uh, it was discovered uh, that, uh, in fact, there were these things that uh, Paul named quasi-crystals that defied what we'd all been taught, and they do have five-fold symmetry. And uh, he's done a lot of theoretical work understanding quasi-crystals. Uh, but then he did something really quite interesting, in my view. He said, you know, I wonder if any quasi-crystals exist in nature, as opposed to have been synthesized in a laboratory. And he went on a search for, uh, through all of the X-ray crystallographic data that was available to, to, to look for things that seemed to have the characteristics that might match being quasi-crystals. And lo and behold, he found, uh, I think it was a copper, aluminum, iron alloy in the weirdest rock you can imagine. Uh, I don't know if he's found others or if this is still the only one. Uh, I don't even know if it has a mineral name yet, which would be great because uh, it would be an important mineral. Uh, it was, uh, again, he was searching through libraries of, uh, of, of uh, X-ray diffraction patterns and uh, somebody had a rock in a museum in, uh, uh, in Italy they had ground up the entire rock, so you couldn't study it particularly. Uh, and in, in looking for the candidate minerals, he found, he found out about this rock and he went and discovered, lo and behold, it, had, it has the natural quasi-crystals in it. And uh, then he came to us and said, you know, can you help me figure out what this rock uh, is and uh, why, is there something special about it? Uh, and so he came and worked with some people at Caltech about characterizing it, because remember, it all been ground up. It was all just microparticles that you could study. But then he did something else. It, it, uh, uh, he said, I need to find more of this stuff, and he went on an expedition to Russia and uh, found more of the same material, uh, and it's an unusual place to find a meteorite. It wasn't just sitting on the ground, it was in a sediment. So I know something of his work, and I, I think it's fascinating, and so I'm very pleased to be able to do this. Uh, and so he also is uh, highly decorated uh, for his contribution to the theory of quasicrystals, member of the National Ac uh, Academy of Sciences, and he won the uh, Buckley Prize, the American Physical Society. So today, we are, uh, his citation reads, a seminal contributions to theoretical physics and cosmology. I don't know why it doesn't say to quasi-crystals. Maybe that was just left off because that's what I find so interesting. Uh, so please well, uh, join me in welcoming our third 2014 Caltech Distinguished Alumnus, uh, Paul Steinhardt.
Okay. Yeah. Well, standing at this podium is a very uh, humbling experience and um, also makes one feel quite grateful. It's humbling to be sharing a distinction with such a accomplished alumni, both the people uh, here today and people who have received this distinction in the past. And of course, I feel grateful to so many people, uh, grateful first and foremost to family who have uh, provided love and support through thick and thin, including, as Ed mentioned, uh, 2011 alumnus who accompanied me on a trip to the remotest area of northern Kamchatka Peninsula to look for little pieces of rock that might, be, might have quasi-crystals in them. Um, of course, I'm grateful to those who uh, proposed uh, and supported uh, my nomination for this distinction. I'm grateful to uh, uh, well, slews of collaborators and students who have provided inspiring ideas. Uh, grateful to colleagues who have encouraged me at various stages when you're trying to do something very daring. Um, nevertheless, they provided encouragement and support. Uh, I'm grateful to be in a society that supports basic research of the sort uh, that, I, that I pursue. Uh, and of course, I'm extremely grateful and profoundly grateful to Caltech and all that it's given me. I came to Caltech um, in 1970 as a 17-year-old, really not knowing what I wanted to do, but I really didn't have a very positive impression about physics, so I was pretty sure that wasn't what I was going to do. Um, but um, you know, within a few days, I met Peter Goldreich and my freshman advisor, Tom Tembrello, and I began to take freshman physics from Tommy Lauritsen. And I think it was about two weeks that I suddenly was converted, and I haven't you know, looked back since. And I, and I had the great fortune of working in research with a number of uh, just extraordinary scientists like Tommy Lauritsen and Andrew Engersall um, in astrophysics and Barry Barish in particle physics and uh, most importantly to me, Richard Feynman, who I had a chance to do my senior work with. Um, and from, those, from that experience, um, well, I learned several important things. Uh, I learned, first of all, that disciplinary lines should be ignored. Just look for good puzzles wherever they lie, and they lie all over the place. And once you find a good puzzle, the first thing you should do is question conventional wisdom, because that's likely to where, be where the solution to the puzzle lies, and challenging that conventional wisdom. And when you pursue science, pursue it passionately. Pursue it honestly and pursue it, pursue it with the utmost seriousness. Because if you pursue it very, very seriously, you will have a heck of a lot of fun. And, um, and that really epitomizes my experience at Caltech, you know, being, pursuing science and pursuing education seriously, honestly, passionately, and having a heck of a lot of fun. And also my experience as a scientist. Uh, just to name an example, since Ed talked about the quasi-crystals part of the story, I'll say something about the cosmology part of the story. Uh, we find ourselves now at a really fascinating juncture in, in, in the field of cosmology. We've had these fascinating results reported two months ago and the, uh, by the BICEP2 collaboration, and those of you that were here in the talk previous heard Jamie Bach, one of the leaders of that collaboration, talk about that work. And the immediate response was to reach a certain conclusion and to conclude that the standard model of cosmology has been proven, at least that's what it said in some circles. Um, and as often happens in science, when you stare closely and carefully, you discover puzzles and questions. And, and now, two months later, we're having this fascinating meeting just a, a block or so away, in which we, you know, those puzzles are being uncovered, and it's not clear what's going to happen. It could well be that the, you know, that the models, that the standard model that we thought was proven ends up being um, disfavored, and models that we thought we had discarded may come to the fore. And what we'll decide it will be the next round of experiments. Eight different groups throughout the world are going after the same science, and we'll know the answer in about a year or two. And, and one thing's for certain, uh, it's going to be a wild ride, and it's gonna be a heck of a lot of fun. So um, I feel really uh, fortunate that Caltech has put me in a position where I can uh, be a, a, a participant in a science, this extraordinary science at this extraordinary time. So I thank Caltech and all that contributed to me.
Thank you. Okay, next, uh, Richard uh, Miller, uh, PhD in Applied Mechanics in uh, 1976, and he's the president of the Olin College of Engineering. It's not enough to say that Rick is the president of the Olin College of Engineering. Uh, this is a, is a grand experiment uh, in how to redefine engineering education, uh, and it, it, is, it is turning out uh, to be successful. He was its found, is its founding president, and the college's very first employee. And, you know, uh, well, there must be other examples, but I don't know of them. It is not common to start a new university or a new college, all right? You know, we all are the next in line of places that have been there for a while and that have been defined already by, as I say, by the accomplishments and the contributions uh, and approach of their alumni. And so it's a, it's a very daring thing. Uh, uh, the Olin program is, is uh, different and uh, it has an innovative approach to engineering uh, education, trying to bring students into contact at, when they are undergraduates with real world engineering problems uh, and uh, then to see the importance and how to use creativity when they approach these real world problems. And that's, that's part of the education, not just learning the, uh, the equations, learning uh, by design studies or by, by building things, but it's to be thrown into real world engineering uh, uh, applications, and it's working. So he received his PhD here, as I said, in 1976 in applied mechanics. He's a member of the National Academy of Engineering, and he won the National Academy of Sciences uh, Gordon Prize for Innovation, Engineering, and Technology Education just last year. And it, it is, I mean, it, it understates the achievement and the audacity of, of, of trying to do something new in, in, in something very, very important, and yet where people had had already known, thought they knew how to do it. It's sort of, as Paul said, challenged the conventional wisdom. So we honor him uh, with our fourth uh, 2014 Distinguished Alumni Award for his visionary leadership, this is in quotes, visionary leadership and commitment to innovation and engineering education for the benefit of society. So please join me in welcoming our fourth uh, alumnus, Dick Miller. Well, before I start, let me say that my wife still thinks of what I'm doing as my midlife crisis. <laughs> um, last year, of all the bachelor's degrees that were offered in the United States, to all the students majoring in all disciplines, only about 4% went to students who were majoring in engineering of any kind. This is a declining percentage. It's about a factor of three smaller than it was when I graduated. In Europe, the percentage is about 12%. In Asia, it's about 26%. Furthermore, about half of all the students who declare engineering as a major as they start their career this fall will not graduate in engineering. And only 18% of the students who graduate in engineering are women. Now, I'm deeply humbled and honored beyond words at this recognition today to be chosen for inclusion among the honor roll of Caltech alumni is far beyond any expectation that ever occurred to me as even a remote possibility. There are so many other Caltech alumni that are stunningly exceptional, it's hard for me to accept how I could measure up. I want to thank Caltech and all those who were responsible for my selection. It's not possible to explain to you how much this means to me, particularly at this time. Caltech provided me with a model of superb academic excellence and also of personal support and guidance from several dear mentors that have seeded my vision for the creation of Olin College. Both institutions are extremely small. Both are extremely good at the mission that they've chosen. An occasion like this provides a rare opportunity, in fact, essentially a necessity, to reflect on one's career. Looking back, I see a long stream of extremely fortunate events. 
long sacrificial support from my wife and family, unfailing encouragement and support from Caltech mentors, and a slow realization that my passion and mission lay not in continued scientific or engineering research, as I was trained to do here at Caltech, but instead in understanding how best to educate the next generation. Now this left turn in my career led to many nights of insecurity and self-doubt, and even persistent feeling of regret that my colleagues at Caltech would be disappointed in me, feeling that I turned my back on my early technical training. So this affirmation by Caltech has helped fill a hole inside and made me feel good about the life-changing decision to devote my career in the last 15 years to rethinking STEM education in the 21st century. Thank you again for this enormous honor, the greatest honor of my career. I will never feel fully feel worthy of this, but I'll always feel deeply grateful to all that Caltech has given me and continues to give me. I also see the answer to prayer and the influence of what I believe must be divine intervention in my life through the many unlikely twists and turns as I took risks, as I walked away from tenure twice, as I changed institutions four times, dragging my family 3,000 miles across the country. I think my wife thinks my next job is going to be in Helsinki. <laughs> we started in Santa Barbara. It seems, to, it seems in retrospect that it's all worked out for the best. This is captured pretty well in a quote from the Bible, in Ecclesiastes 9 and 11. I returned and I saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance happeneth to them all. I'm so very fortunate to be standing here today. Thank you. Although I know Rick uh, does wonder, I believe him when he says, I'm surprised, but you know, it's a remarkable achievement, and all of you, what we, what we value as an institution, are as, as, as Paul said, as, as, as you said, you know, to do things that are audacious, to do things that are different, go against the conventional wisdom, and that's part of the recognition I hope that we're giving in the Distinguished Alumni Awards today. Okay, next. The fifth awardee is uh, Richard Scheller, PhD in uh, 1980 uh, from, uh, in chemistry and chemical engineering, probably in chemistry. He is the executive vice president uh, for research and early development at Genentech. Um, I see some similarity in, in James, with James Wong in that uh, uh, Richard starts out uh, doing uh, outstanding uh, research on his own and becomes a professor. His work at Caltech, synthesizing DNA and proteins in order to study their interactions, actually helped led, lead to the creation of the biotech company that now works for Genentech. But then, after this, uh, he went on to become a professor at Stanford, and I think he was a professor there for roughly 20 years. You can, where is it? You can correct me, it's something like that. Um, uh, and where he conducted extremely important research on the molecular underpinnings of neurotransmitter release. He's a member of the National Academy of Sciences. And uh, for those of you who know, there, there are very, some very important awards, and he won the Lasker Basic Medical Research Award for this work. So as a scientist, very distinguished, following a path that many of us recognize. But then he took a risk, and he described this to me, uh, that it was a, a big change to give up this extraordinarily successful research program to go back to Genentech in 2001. And now he's responsible for overseeing research from initial discovery to proof of concept for the amazing set of contributions that Genentech is making to human health uh, across the world. And he's described this to uh, several of us, and it's really uh, amazing what uh, Genentech uh, is doing. And, and so again, there's uh, something different here gets trained as a research scientist, 
uh, goes off and does what research scientists do, does it extremely well in an extremely distinguished fashion, but again, does something audacious, takes a risk, and goes off into industry, same as James did, in some ways the same as, uh, uh, as Rick did. And so uh, uh, we're, it's a real pleasure to honor him today for his seminal work in leadership in biological sciences and also for what he's doing uh, in the world of, uh, of business and in the creation of drugs for humanity. So I'm pleased to present uh, Richard Scheller for the fifth 2014 Distinguished Forum of Year. Thanks so much, everyone. I, uh, I learned that I was going to have the opportunity to make some remarks as I was walking into the auditorium. Uh, I will uh, take this up with my administrative assistant when I get home. <laughs> I have some uh, remarks that I've written on a, on a receipt for, from dinner a couple of nights ago. Um, as Ed mentioned, I have received some awards that some people might feel are as or more important than this award, but I can tell you honestly that this award is the most important one for, for me personally, having graduated, of course, fr from Caltech. I was also fortunate to be able to deliver the Norman Davidson Memorial Lecture to the folks here at the Institute yesterday, and that was also particularly rewarding as, as Norman was the chairman of my thesis committee many years ago. And uh, I did get a little bit choked up in the, those remarks uh, prior to the lecture. I also had the opportunity, though, to visit some of the young faculty at Caltech yesterday. And I met a remarkable young scientist who started his lab here a year ago, coming from the Whitehead Institute at MIT. I met a remarkable young woman who started her lab here about a, a year ago, coming from Stanford. And from what I saw, based on my visit, the Institute really has, has a, is still tremendous, and the greater things are still to come for Caltech in the future. My current role in developing medicines, I bring the scientific rigor that I really learned here to my work. I remember the times that I spent with my thesis advisor, Eric Davidson, where we would spend two hours in his office with a group, a small group of graduate students reading papers and trying to understand whether the conclusions that were made or the papers were actually true or not. There were times when we would spend eight hours on a single paper, going into the details of the methods, going into the, into the conclusions, really digging into whether the conclusions were justified. And I feel as though it's extremely important that was a, an extremely important influence on me that I brought to bear on all of my scientific career uh, throughout the years. The medicines that we've developed at Genentech, uh, mostly cancer medicines, have added millions of years of life to people. Millions of years. That, that's something I'm extremely proud of. And the, the molecules, the medicines that we have in development, I'm sure will add many millions of more years of life to people throughout the years. And I feel that Caltech is in no small part responsible for putting me in a position to help patients. Thank you. Our final awardee is uh, David uh, Chavez, uh, received his bachelor's degree in chemistry in 1996. And so uh, we spanned uh, from uh, James with his degree in uh, 65, but he defended in 64, we already know that. <laughs> so basically, almost 30 years we're spanning of, uh, of our alumni in, in this award this year, and that's wonderful. 
He's uh, at Los Alamos. He's a principal investigator and project leader there. His contributions to the field of chemistry have included the creation of versatile new synthetic compounds and processes of high nitrogen compounds that have led to more environmentally friendly explosives and propellants. Uh, his scientific advances can be seen not only in the improved uh, weapon systems used by our nation's armed forces, but in the fireworks set off from Disneyland each night. <laughs> and I, 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 I am, I don't know if I'm on the committee or if I just sit there ex officio uh, when the decisions are made, uh, for the Distinguished Alumni Awards. And I'll tell you that there was a professor who actually uh, could understand in some detail what David had done. And it was the most fascinating, most fascinating uh, explanation of chemistry. You know, we go look at these fireworks, but, and they're pretty, and they're interesting, and they're fascinating, but they are very heavy and bad pollutants. Maybe you've changed the whole world and they don't use that as anymore. But the ones we all saw when we were kids were wonderful and noisy, but very dirty. And, and what David has done is change it through these high nitrogen compounds where they are uh, maybe even prettier, but they are clean. And so uh, it, it's, it's a very interesting and remarkable contribution. And also by being in a national lab, he's making a contribution uh, to the national welfare. So after getting his undergraduate degree at here at Caltech, he went on to get a PhD at Harvard and then did postdoc work at Los Alamos, and he stayed there. And he's, uh, he's uh, an important uh, scientist there. So we're honoring David today for his uh, extensive and groundbreaking contributions to chemistry. So please join me in welcoming and uh, congratulating our sixth and final 2014 uh, distinguished alumnus, uh, David Chavez. Uh, th thank you very much. Uh, like many of the other award winners this evening, I am also very humbled by, by the recognition of this award. Um, I, w I wanted to begin by thanking those uh, who really helped, helped me to, uh, I guess I would say, uh, find confidence in myself. So I wanted to start off with a, with a story about how I got to Caltech, and, and I'll try to keep my, my comments uh, short, but I had the opportunity to participate in a, in a summer science program at the Los Alamos National Lab when I was a sophomore in high school, and it really inspired me to look at uh, the opportunities that I didn't really see were, were available to a, to a student like me. And I just happened to have the opportunity to listen to a presentation from a graduate student at Caltech who happened to be at, at, at the lab presenting, and, and, it's, and it, it inspired me to have Caltech as, as my goal to, as a school to, to attend. So I applied, and as a high school student, I felt like most high school students probably do, they, they feel like they're invincible, and, and they can do, you know, nothing's going to stop them. And I received a, a uh, note from my high school counselor that said, uh, Come, come and speak to her. So I, I went in and she said, you know, we got this uh, phone call from Caltech today and they uh, had some questions about your, your uh, preparation. And, and I went to a small rural school so I didn't have a lot of uh, very har uh, hard science courses, at least not, not in the type that would be required to be very successful at, at Caltech. So sh she said, they're a little bit concerned and, and I, I responded, well, you know, what, what, how did you, how did you respond, respond to them? And she, she said, well, I told them, this is the best student we have here, and either take them or don't. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I took with that, well, I guess, I guess I'm not getting into Caltech. <laughs> and, and I thought to myself, uh, wasn't there anything, couldn't you lobby a little bit better <laughs> on behalf? And interestingly, my high school counselor turned out to be a, a godparent of mine, so I was even more wounded by, by that. <laughs> uh, I was shocked by the letter I received the following week uh, accepting me to, to the school. 
uh, as I went through through the process of, of uh, being educated, becoming educated at, at Caltech, what I didn't realize was that I was really being uh, formed in, in a way that that gave me the confidence to, to have a vision and to see further than I, I thought I could really see in terms of, 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 of science. And, and I didn't really realize that until I was in, in graduate school and my first graduate group meeting that I had to pre present at was, I was a graduate student at Harvard and I, and I thought to myself, um, here I am presenting to Harvard graduate students and, and postdocs and a Harvard professor and they're, they're going to, what are, what are they going to, to think of me? Um, this is, was the most nerve-wracking presentation I had given in, in, in my life at, at that point. But as I, as I began to think about it, I, I thought, well, how hard can Harvard be? I went to Caltech. <laughs> <laughs> The important things that I learned at Caltech were that I had, uh, what, what I really learned about science was the importance of mentors. Um, I had mentors in my summer program at, at the laboratory as a high school student. I had very strong mentors at, at Caltech, and I'd like to, to, to name them. Uh, Sonny, Professor Sonny Chan was my advisor. He really helped me to to understand the, the process of learning at, at an institution like this. Professor Eric Carrera, who's, who moved on to, to a different institution, was also uh, integral in, in, in really guiding me and, and helping me make it through, through you know, dif difficult times and, and some of the struggles of, of uh, being an undergraduate. And also Professor John Burkaw, who helped inspire me as well, especially with respect to the importance of, of the work that is being done at, at uh, the Los Alamos National Laboratory. I also wanted to uh, use this opportunity to relay just one quick uh, short story, and, and that was when I first came to Caltech, they had a bridge program. It was called the, the bridge program to uh, help students who m may not have had access to advanced AP or, or other types of, of courses and, and help bridge the high school level uh, preparation to the actual coursework of, of Caltech. And, and during that time, I really, uh, I really found that I was strug struggling a lot. And I didn't know whether I could really handle the, the pressure of, of the level of intensity of the work. So I, I called uh, home many, many times to my parents, in particular my dad, and I would be looking for, for a, a way out, something that would allow me a, a back door to kind of slip out the back and, and no one would ever know that I was here and that I had never tried. Um, but I had the opportunity to uh, have a person tell me, you know, the semester hasn't even started yet, and, and, and you know, you're, you're wanting to walk out the door. Why don't you wait until the first year? You know, it's pass fail, and, and uh, give, give that a shot. And so I think I'm grateful, and I hope my dad's grateful, that I stopped calling him. Uh, <laughs> and, and I gave it a shot, and I don't think I ever called back with, with those types of uh, words uh, of uh, looking for, for a way out. So. I also wanted to mention that I'm, I'm very humbled by this award. When I received the phone, phone call from Provost Stolper, the caller ID said unknown on it. <laughs> and, Entirely appropriate. <laughs> and, some, and someone had just called before that, and, and then the phone rang again, and I thought, well, you know, I'm, I'm, this is probably important. I need to, to answer this. I received the phone call. I was notified that I had been selected for a Distinguished Alumni Award, and, and like some others who have spoken up here this evening, uh, I, I thought, well, how, how can I be a person who is a Distinguished Alumni from, from this university? I talked to, to Provost Stolper. I 
got the information. He t talked to me about the process and everything. And we, we hung up, got off the phone. But I still didn't really believe it. And since there was no callback number, I didn't know that this wasn't a, a practical joke. <laughs> so over the, the next maybe three to four weeks, I, I heard nothing uh, about this. And I started wondering, did I, did I make this all up? Was this really a figment of my imagination? So I started doing internet searching and trying to find, well, did this really happen or not? And, and then fi finally I did get uh, sort of a, a roundabout secondhand uh, piece of information that confirmed that this really was true. <laughs> So again, I, I'm very humbled by, by the award. Um, I am very grateful, and, and I hope to continue to in, inspire others to, to make a strong effort, especially when they feel that um, when they're down or when, when things just are, are at their or low points in their lives, that there, there's nothing really that can replace hard work, and, and that hard work is what I hope to inspire others to, to see, and if you work hard, that many, many things are possible. So thank you very much. Well, I, this concludes our, uh, this part of the ceremony and I, I thank and commend the honorees. And, and, and really, the, think, about, think about what they said. They're, they're, they're what they said, each and every one of them was fascinating and illustrates, I think, what's special about Caltech alumni, and also I do believe that uh, each one of them uh, has, has been epitomized what we want to try to accomplish in the education and then see in the contributions to science, to education, to engineering, to humanity, to the nation uh, uh, among our alumni, and they really have done something very, very special. I want to thank the people that nominated them as well. The nomination process is open to all of you anybody, and it's, uh, it's, it's through people that know uh, their fellow alumni uh, well that we are able to select such outstanding, pe outstanding people. So I hope you enjoy the rest of the day. Thanks again to Paul for organizing it. Uh, Heather Dean will now come up and introduce uh, Carver Mead for the next part of the program. Uh, thank you. I'm inspired and, and more proud than ever to be part of this community. Um, I, I, I'm sure you feel the same way. So uh, Ed got it slightly wrong. I'm actually the introducer of the introducer. So <laughs> it's my pleasure to introduce and thank Paul Levine. Paul is a Caltech alumnus who received his bachelor's degree in engineering in 1972. He has been this year's chair of the seminar day committee. I also want to thank all the members of the Seminar Day Committee. Would the Seminar Day, Day Committee members in attendance please stand up so that we can recognize you?